Out of the box, your Apple Watch comes loaded with settings that drain its battery and waste storage space. One of these settings may even put your personal health and safety at risk. We'll get to that in just a moment, but first, let's talk about one of the biggest Apple Watch battery drainers. Let's open the settings app. I'm gonna press the digital crown. Here we have our list of apps. If you're in the grid view, look for the settings gear. If you're in the list view, scroll down until you get to settings. These are in alphabetical order. And here we have settings. We'll tap on that, scroll down and tap general, then scroll down and tap background app refresh. Background app refresh allows your apps to download new content in the background of your Apple Watch so it's there when you open the app. It sounds good and it is in some cases, but it can drain your battery. We really recommend scrolling down and turning the switches off next to most of your apps with the exception primarily of messages apps. This is really important. If you set up an Apple Watch face complication for an app, that'll continue to refresh even if you turn off background app refresh. So here's a great example. I have activity. I have that complication on my Apple Watch face, but I'm gonna turn off the switch next to it for background app refresh. Next, let's tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen, scroll down and tap on screenshots and turn on the switch next to enable screenshots. When this switch is on, you can take screenshots on your Apple Watch by simultaneously pressing the digital crown and the side button. Your screen will flash, indicate the screenshot has been taken. In our video about signs someone is tracking your iPhone, we talked about how important it is to always be ready to take a screenshot of suspicious activity. That's why this is so important to know how to do. To view your Apple Watch screenshots, open the Photos app on your iPhone, scroll down and tap Screenshots, and they'll be in here. Kind of hard to pick them out, but here's a pro tip. If you tap the three dots in the upper right-hand corner of the screen and then tap Aspect Ratio Grid, you'll get the nice square Apple Watch screenshots as opposed to the rectangular iPhone screenshots. Just like our last setting, this next one is essential for protecting your privacy. On your Apple Watch, tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen. One below screenshots is Profiles. Tap on that and check to see if any configuration profiles have been installed on your Apple Watch. Configuration profiles set your Apple Watch up in a very specific specific way, and they're used by beta testers, schools, and offices, but they can be abused by bad actors like Ben Affleck. Dear Blade. If you see a configuration profile in here that you don't remember installing, consider uninstalling it, but if you got your Apple Watch through school or through your job, just contact your boss first and make sure you're not deleting something important. Let's head back to the main page of settings, scroll down, and tap focus and then scroll all the way down to mirror my iPhone. When you turn on a focus on your iPhone, do you want that same focus to be turned on on your Apple Watch? For most people, I think the answer is going to be yes. If you don't wanna be distracted on your iPhone, you probably don't wanna be distracted on your Apple Watch either. Let's turn on the switch next to mirror my iPhone. Next, an important difference between your iPhone and your Apple Watch, and that's the way that airplane mode is handled. Let's tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen. One below focus is airplane mode, tap on that and then scroll down to airplane mode behavior. By default, Wi-Fi was off for me, but when I go into airplane mode on my iPhone, Wi-Fi stays on. I want the same to be true for my Apple Watch. So I'm gonna turn on the switch next to Wi-Fi. It's especially important if you don't have a cellular plan for your Apple Watch. Next up, we have a very important security setting. Before we get to that, if you give this video a thumbs up, help us reach more people, we'd really appreciate it. Let's talk about joining hotspots. Tap back to the main page of settings, scroll down and tap Wi-Fi and then scroll down to Auto Hotspot Settings and then tap Ask to Join. By default, this is set to Ask to Join, but we recommend selecting Never. Definitely don't pick Automatic. You don't want your Apple Watch going around asking to join people's hotspots. First, it's just played rude. And second, you don't know who's on the other end monitoring your activity. I'll tap on Never and you'll know it's on when a blue check mark appears to its right. Next up, always on display. Every Apple Watch since the 5 minus the Apple Watch SE has supported always on display. It gives you quick information at a glance and allows you to see the time all the time. I think always on display looks great in an app like settings, but when you're on the watch face, the always on display is just way too bright. So on our watch face, let's go back to the main page of settings. Scroll down and tap display and brightness, then scroll down and tap on Always On. You have two options. You could turn off the switch next to Always On like David did. Or if you like Always On Display, you can turn it on and tweak what actually appears and remove some of the things to lower that screen brightness. So do you need that complication data? If not, you can tap on Show Complication Data and turn off the switch at the top of the screen. 
I like that Apple built in a happy medium here for people like me that do like always on display. The most important thing for me, if I tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen is the show apps option and turning this off. I think that gives it a nice Spartan view. Let's tap back in the upper left-hand corner of the screen to our display settings. Scroll down and make sure wake on wrist raise and wake on crown rotation are on. Wake on wrist raise is pretty self-explanatory. Just raise your wrist like you're looking at the time. Wake on crown rotation allows you to wake up your Apple Watch's display by slowly rotating the digital crown up. There's one more display setting we have to look at. If we go to our Apple Watch, let's scroll down and tap on wake duration. You can choose how long your Apple Watch stays awake by tapping wake duration and you could choose either 15 or 70 seconds. Typically, I'm just checking the time or my activity ring, so I like 15 seconds. If you choose 70 seconds, just keep in mind the longer your display is on, the more battery it's going to drain. Apple, why 70 seconds? It doesn't make any sense. Let us know. If you know, leave a comment below and tell us. Yeah, help us. This is breaking my brain. You know it only takes a few seconds hitting that subscribe button right below this video. It helps us out a lot. This next setting is one of my favorites. App view, check this out. Let's head back to the main page of our Apple Watch settings. Scroll down and tap app view. We've got grid view and list view. Which do you prefer? I prefer list view because call me crazy, but my brain isn't laid out in strange honeycomb patterns to find right. apps. Alphabetical order though, I've learned that since I was a kid. I like list view as well. Keep it alphabetical, easy. I'll get there eventually. I just feel so, you know, where's It's overwhelming, thing? it's overwhelming. It's too much, you're too much, Imagine Siri. if your iPhone home screen was like this, where you had one home screen <laughs> and all your apps were sort of laid out like this, yeah. it, just, it wouldn't work. Is there a better way to do this? Leave us a comment, tell us. There has to be a middle of the road solution. This next setting will help prevent you from losing your hearing, literally. Let's tap back to the main page of settings, scroll down and tap on sounds and haptics. And scroll down and tap on headphone safety. And that setting is reduced loud sounds. When this is on, your Apple Watch analyzes the audio coming through your headphones and reduces sounds that are over a certain decibel level. If we scroll down, we'll find the reduced loud sounds, tap on that and turn on the switch next to reduce loud sounds. According to a CDC study, 90 decibel noises can cause hearing damage in less than three hours. I've been kind of resistant to this feature in the past, but I'm, I'm definitely warming up to it. Let's tap back two pages to our main sounds and haptics page in Apple Watch settings. Scroll down and take a look at the switch next to haptic alerts. Even Apple admits that haptics, like haptic keyboard feedback on an iPhone, can drain battery life. For example, if we scroll down, we see crown haptics. It gives you a haptic response when you're scrolling with the crown. Feels kind of cool. Is it totally necessary? Not really. You can go ahead and turn that switch off if you don't care. It's winter time, David, and that's why this is the season we like to talk about fall detection. I have never slipped and fell and lacerated my eyebrow and had to get stitches. Anyway, let's talk about fall detection. Tap back to the main page of settings on your Apple Watch, scroll down, and tap SOS. Then tap fall detection. By default, this is set to only on during workouts, but you might wanna set it to on all the time. This feature is made for you frat bros who like to body slam each other and you know, whatever frat bros do. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're I don't know, I was never in a I wasn't either, <laughs> surprise. You're getting body slammed, it thinks you fell. Yep. That's why you wanna have workouts only on so that when you're with your bros, you know, Go, go to town. If this is a feature you want all the time, maybe you're prone to slips on icy sidewalks, consider turning on always on. There's no setting for it, but this is pretty cool. Apple Watches can apparently detect gunshots too. Theoretically, law enforcement could mount an Apple Watch to a drone and then have it listen for gunshots and triangulate where they're coming from. The Apple Watch is amazing. One of its standout features is its great battery life, but there is one more battery setting we need to turn off. Let's tap back to the main page of Apple Watch settings, scroll down and tap battery, then scroll down and tap battery health, and then scroll down and turn off the switch next to optimize charge limit, and then select turn off. This is like optimized battery charging on your iPhone. Your Apple Watch learns from your daily routine when to charge itself up to 100%. But we recommend turning this switch off because there are two other settings you need to turn on for this to work and we don't like those settings at all. We'll show you what those settings are in just a minute, but first we'll take a quick detour into the App Store. Let's head back to the main page of your Apple Watch settings, scroll down 
and tap App Store, the first thing to look at is automatic downloads. When this is on, apps you've installed on your iPhone and iPad also show up on your Apple Watch, which is super annoying and takes up a lot of unnecessary storage space. Make sure the switch next to automatic downloads is off. Then let's tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen, scroll down, and tap on mindfulness. The first thing to take a look at here is reminders. I don't want mindfulness reminders. I want to be stressed and anxious all day long. Right, I don't need to be reminded to be mindful. If you like these reminders, feel free to leave them on. I get annoyed by them. I'm gonna turn both of those switches off. You know, if you're already a 10 out of 10 in mindfulness, sure. David, what the hell's the point of that? The same goes for our weekly summary. Let's scroll down. Weekly summary. Do I need a summary of the mindfulness reminders that I'm not doing? <laughs> no. No, you don't. You're already mindful of it. I'm already mindful of the mindfulness. Yeah. yeah, let's turn that switch off. What about audio meditations, David? Well, by default, your Apple Watch downloads audio meditations. If we scroll down here, add new meditations to watch. It only deletes these meditations after you've listened to them. What if you don't listen to them? Well, then your Apple Watch is just downloading things that you're never going to use, filling up storage space. It's a waste. I'm gonna turn that switch off. If you like the meditations and use them, leave it on. One thing that frustrates some of our viewers is how fast we speak. That's why we created PDFs for our channel members who for the low, low price of $5 a month get to interact with us and get these kinds of setup guides for their Apple devices. We've made them for iPhone and now we're making them for Apple Watch to Click that join button below this video, get all these perks and more when you sign up and it helps us out tremendously. Next up, podcasts. By default, your Apple Watch downloads podcasts whenever it's connected to power. And then they stay in your Apple Watch forever until you listen to them. If you don't want your Apple Watch to download these podcasts without your consent, let's tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen, scroll down, tap podcasts, tap up next, and then tap off. But wait, there's another step you need to take. Let's tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen, tap on saved, and then tap off. Next up, let's talk about what is arguably the most important part of your Apple Watch settings, and that's privacy and security. Let's head back to the main page of your Apple Watch settings, scroll up, then tap privacy and security. And we're gonna start with Apple Watch analytics and improvements. And as you can see, a lot of the switches in here are grayed out. That's because you need to change a lot of the privacy settings on your iPhone and they get mirrored onto your Apple Watch. So check out our next video, every iPhone privacy setting you need to turn off now. It's appearing on the screen, click it, check it out, watch that video, it's, it's good.